Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how I style HTMX apps with Tailwind CSS. So HTMX is changing the way we build web apps, essentially unlocking spa-like user experiences with the simplicity of MPAs. So single page application-like user experiences with the simplicity of multi-page applications, how we kind of traditionally built web apps for a very long time. And it certainly changed the way that I build web apps, freeing me to move away from front-end frameworks like SvelteKit and towards full-stack moduliths in my favorite language, f -sharp. Now, Tailwind is a popular tool for styling apps with CSS in a composable and ergonomic way. I personally like building with Tailwind because it makes styling a bit less of a chore. It's easy to tweak styles here and there with just a few class changes without digging through nested CSS classes. I often couple it with Daisy UI to get a balance of ready to use components and easy customizability. And that's actually what's styling this site right now. Now, HTMX is still growing in popularity. And so there's a lot of new people that are like, you know, seeing it for the first time, trying it out in their own projects, stuff like that. And I've seen a pattern of like a lot of confusion and how to do common things with it. And so in this post, we're gonna explore how to use Tailwind and HTMX apps to kind of give you that like modern styling experience that you might be used to coming from JS land, but um, actually use it in HTMX land. Now, quick shout out, if you want to support HTMX and get some swag, you can check out the official HTMX swag store here. I don't know if you can see my shirt, but this is one of these HTMX swags. This is totally not sponsored, but I really like HTMX and I want to support its creator. And one of the best ways to do that um, in open source is to give them some money. And so this is an easy way to do that. Um, and you also get something interesting in return. All right, now onto the post. All right, so let's start with HTMX apps are MPAs. They are multi-page applications. So a lot of the confusion around HTMX, I think originates from a core misunderstanding of what HTMX is and what that means for building web apps with it. And so here's my take. So basically HTMX is a library that you load on a web page just like any other kind of JavaScript library. And HTMX allows the web page to ask the server for HTML partials, as opposed to MPAs, which usually ask for full HTML pages. And it kind of does this in two ways. One, it allows any element to send a web request, and then it allows you to declare when I get HTML back, what do I do with that HTML? Um, so essentially it's asking the server for HTML partials and then setting up, what do you do with it? That's really what it's unlocking. And then on the server, it supports these requests. It supports HTMX by adding and modifying endpoints so they can return HTML partials. And so sometimes you add new endpoints that's like, oh, this is just for rendering a comment. Oftentimes what you'll do is just modify existing endpoints. So like, you know, here's my URL here. Um, I might modify it so that if it sees the target is comments, it's only gonna send back the HTML for comments not re-render the entire page. And so again, this allows for the return of HTML partials as opposed to the full HTML pages that MPAs would usually return. And so put simply, most HTMX apps are really just MPAs with a bit of extra server endpoints and logic to enable sending HTML partials instead of the full HTML page. That's really all it is. MPAs with a few logic conditionals for like, oh, if the target is this, only send the target. And so if we can agree that HTMX are really just MPAs, then this means that we can use the same techniques for styling MPAs with CSS to style HTMX apps with CSS. Okay, styling MPAs with Tailwind. So we've established that HTMX apps are basically just MPAs, which means we can style HTMX apps with Tailwind in the same way we style MPAs with Tailwind. So now let's look at how we can style MPAs with Tailwind. Now, Tailwind is a bit more complicated than simply including a CSS file in your web page. Now, you do use Tailwind by simply including a CSS file in your web page, but typically you don't want to do this with vanilla Tailwind, the thing you get directly from the CDN, um, as the payloads are too large on the order of megabytes. It's a very large surface area of potential styles because it's like basically building new versions of every style with various different um, variations. And so like you can do this, um, it probably won't crash the web page, but like you probably don't want to do this. And so instead it's recommended to use a Tailwind build step so that it prunes itself of all the unused styles to get the small, usually on the order of low kilobytes um, payload that it's famous for. 
Now, exactly how you set up this Tailwind build step largely depends on what technology you're using to build your app. And one of the big unlocks of HTMX and really just hypermedia in general um, is that it is backend agnostic. You can build it with basically any language you want. Any language can basically build HTML these days. A lot of great libraries for doing that. And HTMX is just an extension of HTML. Um, so very easy to use that. But what this does mean is that there are many different ways to use Tailwind. And there's many different ways for you know, apps to build themselves because it's really technology dependent. And so the specifics for each of these will be different. Now that said, using Tailwind outside of the JavaScript ecosystem generally follows a common pattern. If you're in the JS ecosystem, um, you probably have a lot of docs on this already um, and it's all messed up in that build system that they have. But outside the JS ecosystem, generally it's honestly a little bit simpler, um, but it follows this common pattern. And so basically you'll create a Tailwind project in your repo and then you'll set up a build step in whatever you know, you're using to build your app that will run Tailwind CLI. You can find more about this in the official Tailwind docs. Um, pointing it at your source code files that contain the HTML and HTMX, and thus so that it can see the Tailwind classes that you're using so it knows that it should include those in the output. And then you just configure the output to be placed in a static resource folder that your app will serve, along with you know whatever your other static files are, it might be images, it might be CSS, et cetera. And then you just set up your web pages to reference the output Tailwind file. And so by doing this, you're you know allowing your Tailwind CSS to update based on the styles you're using and whatever technology you're using every time you build your app. It outputs these styles in a usable location, which your app can then pull into its web page when it needs it. And that's how you can style you know your web pages with Tailwind for a basic MPA. But this also works for um, HTMX apps as well. Okay, how I use Tailwind CSS to style HTMX. So the above steps are a bit vague because really the specifics depend on the tech stack of choice. Each of these are going to have different ways to build, different ways to include files, different ways to serve files. And so we can't really go into specifics because it's different for each stack. But here I wanted to give a more concrete example of how I do this using my tech stack of choice, which is server-side rendered HTML and X served with f -sharp Giraffe and ASP.NET. And this will kind of give you an example of what it looks like on my end and how it's still following that same pattern I showed you above. Now for a more detailed guide on how I do this, including like all the source code, um, you can check out building ASP.NET apps with Tailwind CSS. And so here's the basic idea, right? Like got my full stack app over here and we're just serving HTML, I'm HTMX here, and then we just include Tailwind in the web page. It just serves up our static files and this just has like a little include and we serve it up. And I can actually show you that this is exactly what I'm doing on my site here. This is just a um, MPA, so we're not using HTMX on this page. Um, but you can see that here I have my output Tailwind um, and this is built when I build my website and then it's pulled in that way. So this is what I'm doing and you know, proof that it works. All right, and so here's how I like set up my project. Basically I have my F Sharp app, which is just my like repo for my F Sharp. And it includes my front end and back end code. Um, I basically write all my HTML in F Sharp. I use an HTML DSL draft out view engine to create HTML in type safe manner. Um, and so I don't have any of these like, you know, HTML partials or whatever. But if you do, that's something to remember because you'll need to um, tell Tailwind CLI that. And then I just have a little project folder Tailwind CLI, which is a node project with all my configurations for styles and um, included dependencies. And just to prove this, here's like my GitHub repo. Um, for my website. And so here's my source. And this has got like all my F sharp stuff in here. And so this is really like we're inside my uh, F sharp app. You can see I have my FS proj and stuff like that. And then inside of this, I just have a little tailwind guy, which is just a little node project um, that has all of its configurations and stuff. Like I have my, you know, tailwind config with my styles and stuff like that. And so that's literally what I'm using for this website. And so I like to build my apps with containers because I find containers to be a 3S simple scalable system for building and deploying apps anywhere. It makes it very easy to get deterministic builds locally and remotely and also has nice features for doing build time configuration as leverage here. And so here's kind of like an overview of how I'm doing this. And it looks complicated, but like it's really just a three step process. Basically, we have our tailwind step and this is all, you know, parsed out in the Docker file. So just three steps, very easy. We have Tailwind, Tailwind parses um, the F Sharp project, looks for all the classes and then outputs its pruned um, file. And then I just build my ASP.NET Core project um, just like I normally would. And then I have an output step, which basically takes this output, um, takes this, puts it in the static folder uh, for ASP.NET. And then it you know, does its little entry point run command, which is how um, we're gonna run the Docker container so it actually runs the thing. And so I know this like is a lot of steps. This is a very busy diagram. But I want to be clear that it is the same amount of steps for HTMX as it is MPA. There is no extra thing needed for HTMX as HTMX is simply HTML 
extended so it plays in the exact same way. Next. So this is basically how I'm building styling all my apps these days. I found it's brought the joy back to building web apps. I don't have to learn the latest framework or feature or deal with the latest you know, breaking bug from some NPM package. I can just build using technologies and techniques I like and I'm used to. Question for you is how are you styling your HTMX apps? I know there's like a lot of different ways to do this. It really depends on the technology. So curious what kind of paradigm technique you're using for, for your apps. If you like this post, you might also like what it's like to run HTMX in production, stories from experienced software engineers. You might also be interested in why you should choose HTMX for your next web-based side project and ditch the crufty MPA and complex spa. And finally, you might be interested in simple interactive islands with F# -sharp and HTMX. This is kind of how I think about building with HTMX in an ergonomic way that still gives you the power of HTMX, um, but the simplicity of an MPA, and also gives some background in how I'm building this stuff with F#. -sharp. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.